Hello everybody, welcome back. I am Ricky and I am just going to take you for a walk around Connerty Meadows Farm. I usually like to do a little bit of a garden slash farm tour. And today we had rain for the first time in 79 days. It is the driest uh, spring on record in the last, I think they said like 100 years or something like that. Anyway, it's been extraordinarily dry here. Um, we've had to use a lot of water from the well, uh, but it was really wonderful to wake up this morning and see some rain coming down. It didn't last a whole lot of time and it wasn't torrential. It was just nice, slow, steady rain. And I thought before the sun disappeared, I'd take you around and show you all the things that are popping up and blooming. This is my beauty of a rose bush that I brought with us from our old place. Um, and man, she's so pretty and she smells amazing and she is letting me know she's happy here you see this here this shoot here is from the ground this new shoot is from the woodstock that's already there but that back one is from the ground she is so happy um, I, and i never expected that and she's just covered in blossoms i love this girl she gives so many pretty flowers. The tulips have all died back now. Um, but look at this. Do you see what I see? That is a peony blossom. Pretty excited. We're going to have some peonies. Um, and then I moved this white rose bush. It was over by the raspberries. And I moved it here. Uh, because we're putting the pergola up around the raspberries and I knew it was going to be in the way so I moved it didn't know how it would do and she's also putting off new shoots and look at this I'm actually going to get a flower pretty excited about this uh, I got fennel coming up this fennel was here last year so it's reseeded itself uh, this is all uh, zinnias in this bed we have our hosta, another hosta. This is thyme that went absolutely crazy. This whole bed is now all covered in thyme. And chamomile. The front garden beds are looking really good. Lots of stuff growing in them. Beautiful purple tulips. I always say that this looks like a, a flower out of Dr. Zeus. It's uh, kind of fun. Lots of beautiful flowers. And we've got still stuff in pots. A lot of this stuff is going around the pergola. So this is kiwi and it's a climber and it, uh, it's going to go around the pergola. And then we have some Concord grapes, a few, another kind of grape. We've got some chives that we're going to take down to the river. And this is a hascap and that's its um, mate the other has cap and the mosquitoes are atrocious look at my Rosa Sharon I actually ended up uh, taking a bunch of her seeds and starting them so I have a whole bunch of little Rosa Sharon starts and this one here is also doing really really well all right I'll take you over to the front of the lawn so this bush here is the snowball bush that I had purchased this year and she already gave off two blossoms and now she's kind of probably done for this year but all these are new shoots she's very happy here as well i put in lavender here it's doing really good um, all the tulips are done for the season that's okay though because look at this uh, this one's all falling apart but roses are coming all up really good and I got my little Dr. Zeus's. They're not really Dr. Zeus's, but anyway. And look at this. Dun, 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 dun. Roses blooming everywhere. All of these have roses on them. 
so pretty to see. Wish you could smell them. And then this lavender down here is quite happy as well. And this is last year's snowball bush, so she's put off quite a few blossoms. And look at our lovely, everything is growing like crazy in this spiral herb garden. Including the weeds. I haven't strawed it down yet, but everything's coming along really well. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you, I talked about how uh, between my mint bed and the, the wall of roses, um, I had something special that was gonna go there. And uh, the something special is here now. <laughs> uh, and it has a really great story. Uh, it's really long and convoluted though. I actually wrote up quite a bit of the story on my Facebook page, the farm Facebook page, Connor D. Mouse Farm, and on our Instagram page. Um, and I'll put the links in the description box below so you can go check out the story. And without further ado, all right, all right. I know it doesn't look like much. Look at her. Tell me that that is not just stunning. Stunning. So I'm actually just gonna put a shout out here. My cousin found my baby for me. So Kevin and Ashley, thank you for finding my baby and uh, finding a way to get it to me so I can put her in my garden and everyone can share in her beauty. All right, let's pop over. We're gonna head over to the asparagus beds. Um, so we didn't have actually as many asparagus come back as I would have liked to have seen. Uh, we had I, some kind of digging underground mole I don't know. Anyway, something that was leaving big mounds and tunnels under our front lawn and dug all through my asparagus and strawberry beds and half of all three beds did not come back. Uh, whatever it was, it obviously had a feast. So this whole side of the bed is okay and there's asparagus come up, but this whole side of the bed, all three of them, nothing. But, what is happening is look, do you see it? Not red yet, but they're there. And all of them have, you can see there, um, and lots of flowers. So soon we'll have strawberries. Well, this is one you don't see very often. Hello, little Goocher. Goocher was named by AC when AC was very little. And Goocher is Sylvester's niece. Oh, hello, Molly. All right, so blueberries, blueberries, blueberries. They're doing good. This is the replacement one here. So I've plucked all the petals off of it for this year. I want it to establish its roots, but it's doing pretty good. It's got a lot of new, new this is all new growth here. Hi, Gucci. Um, so I think this one's going to be just fine here. I think the other one just, just didn't make it, but all the rest of them look really good. So we do have a few things on the list that we're planning on doing hopefully tomorrow. Um, we have this section, so right here, right there. So we have the spiral garden there. And then we have the mint garden there. And then right here, I don't know if you remember from previous videos, I showed uh, down in the bush, we had found an old cement mixer. Now we're actually gonna build like a, a small bed right there. And we're gonna put the cement mixer on its side. And then we're gonna put dirt kind of spilling out of it. And then we're gonna put some flowers and stuff in there. Um, at least that's the plan. And then the other thing that we're planning on finishing tomorrow is that last garden bed in front of the unfinished chicken coop. 
Um, we have a number of flowers that my mother-in-law brought um, for us as well as I still have piles of seeds that we just want to finish getting that all done up. So the goats, uh, they're in here right in front of the garden but uh, because of the rain we didn't actually put them out today so they're very grouchy at us inside the barn. Um, if it rains unfortunately parasitic worms are very close to the surface after a rain and uh, putting the goats out after a rain or during a rain actually because this morning it was still raining um, means that they're more likely to ingest them so generally we just leave them inside and feed them hay they don't have to be very happy about it but that is just the nature of having animals um, and caring for their welfare we just have to um, not let them out they'll go out tomorrow can you guys see that there's so many of them so this is comfrey and it is such a great place of nectar for these guys. Beautiful. What's not beautiful, unfortunately, is all of my apple trees. I don't know if you can see this. See all those holes? So I don't know if on the news you've been reading about the gypsy moth infestation and um, unfortunately, all their little caterpillars are absolutely destroying the trees. So I have been um, spraying them down every few days with soapy water and that seems to, to help. It's just a lot of work, the worst infestation in the last 10 years. I love seeing these guys work. So our bees, our honey bees, actually arrive tomorrow. We, um, we got all the yard ready uh, the other day. Yesterday, I guess, we finished getting it ready. And they arrive tomorrow. And AC is very excited about it. All right, let's pop over and have a looky-loo at the garden here. So you can see we have lots of blossoms is fantastic and oh look at this look at this look at this oh my goodness okay i'm totally eating this i had my eye on this when it was really orange mm, first one of the season mm. i could have been nice and shared it but mm, no i put the work in oh my goodness and there is nothing absolutely nothing like fresh grown strawberries, straight out of the garden, warmed by the sun. Oh, that was delicious. So many of you know, uh, we had actually below freezing temperatures uh, for three days in a row, and I lost a good chunk of my tomatoes, and even though I know better I, to put them in, I still did. So I have now replanted, thankfully I have backups. This is what a lot of my dead ones look like. Now I left this one in because I noticed it had some teeny tiny new growth right there. Do you see it? So I've actually just trimmed back all the dead stuff on this and I left it because I think it's gonna recover. Now you can see one that had been in the house that I was able to bring in right beside it. And this is, uh, this is what the difference is. Now, funny enough, I did not lose all of the tomatoes, even though some I covered and some I didn't. And see, so the same thing here. I've got a replacement here. And this one got burnt. But I see that it's not completely dead. So I'm just gonna leave it and see what happens. Um, some of them obviously took a hit a lot harder than the rest of them. But, so this one, this part here, got very frostbit, but look at this on the top. That's just in the last couple days. So, um, I heavily watered after the frost in hope of saving them. And I think I did manage to save a good number of it. Like this one here, really frosty on the top, but look at these leaves. It's gonna send off some new shoots down here and it will uh, produce nice, good, healthy tomatoes still 
might stunt them a little bit, but I have enough tomatoes that I can, I can deal with that. So this is celery here. And then we have some lettuce down here. And we have some broccoli in here. And for those of you that would have watched my planting the garden video, this here is the lettuce we planted together. And it is coming up. And we would have planted these beans together and this corn. Now I had this happen last year too. You see this? Some nice little bugs get at these guys. And a quick wash with soapy water usually sprays them down and they can deal. I'm going to obviously have to come out here and treat because it looks like there's quite a few of them. And my corn is doing really good. It's amazing how much after a rain everything just kind of pops up like crazy. Look at all these. Look at all these corn and these beans. Hey Molly. So same thing in this row, this is beans, corn, and then beans at the end. And my pumpkins and scallopini. So there's a scallopini there, it's up. Um, and then pumpkin here. And I think that is another pumpkin. I'm not seeing anything there yet. Uh, scallopini here. Now this is butternut squash down here. And I just, hold on, I'm gonna take a step back. So I'm actually growing the butternut squash up on this trellis. It won't climb, it'll need to be supported, but it'll save the space on the ground because this zucchini will become a really big bush there. And I wanted the pumpkin to be able to sprawl through here. And then that scallopini will be a bush down there. So in order that the pumpkin and the um, butternut squash didn't all intermingle, I'm going to put the butternut squash up on the trellis. This is potatoes in this mound here. So you would have seen that on the video as well if you watched planning of the garden video. And um, so I already have potatoes up. So here's something really funny. I already have more sprouts this year than I did last year. And last year I did the whole, you have to cure your potatoes. And I talked about in the video of uh, planting the garden, how um, I'd never done it before. So I thought I should cure them and I did. And then I got the worst harvest ever. I didn't cure them this year. And as you can see, I am doing okay. So here's our bean trellis and we got some beans coming up. It's very exciting. I love seeing stuff pop up in the garden. It brings me such happiness. So that's the main garden there. And then we have added a second post to each of the raspberry beds to raise them up a bit more. The raspberries are doing really good. We are going to have some fresh babies to eat soon. We got all our peppers into pots. So last year I put them in the ground and I didn't do very well at all. And then I had some peppers in pots and all the peppers in the pots did amazing. And the ones in the ground had just started to set fruit when the um, frost came and I lost everything. I think I had like three peppers last year total to eat and I probably had 20 or 30 plants. So that was really disappointing uh, for sweet peppers. Hot peppers that were all in pots did really, really well. And we had enough to pickle and uh, can and do a whole bunch of stuff with. Um, but unfortunately, I don't eat hot peppers. Uh, only Thomas does. And so he got the bounty of that and nobody else did. So this year I said, I'm going to try to do peppers in pots. So the theory is peppers like to be warm. And they like their roots warm and pots with the sun beating down on them all day actually going to stay warmer um, than in the ground now come fall it might not work out as well but i will be able to actually move the pots of the peppers into a warmer location be it the barn the garage somewhere else when the frost comes um, so that i don't have to worry about covering them 
Um, I can just bring them in and out if I need to. So that is my theory behind the pots. So I guess we'll do this experiment together and see how it works. Here we are with the peppers in the pots. And um, I'm kind of laughing because if you look right now, I have one, two, three, four, five peppers right here. I am way further ahead this year than I even was last year. Um, so the theory is that this should work. Um, and I can move them in and out, so that makes it even better for me. And like, look at this, there is flowers and peppers being set. Oh my goodness. Look at this, look at this, look at this. There are peppers here. This is fantastic. And look at the size of this one. So I'm already further ahead this year than I was last year. Like all these little guys are setting fruit now. And here is the garden. Peas are looking really, really good. So as a lot of you know, uh, we got hit by like the cold, right? So I am, I have transplanted uh, a number of my tomatoes, but I've left some of these guys behind. I'm gonna see what happens. Worst case scenario, I cut them off and they're gone, but I'm not ready to give up. I'm not ready to give up on these guys yet. So, lots of things growing here. These guys here, they'll stay here for the summer and then when they go a little more dormant in the fall, I'm gonna move them to the asparagus bush because that is, um, I've lost quite a few of them down in there. Oh, I have some kurabi coming up. Let's see, what else do we got here? Oh yes, the cucamelons. So, um, a number of them got hit by frost really bad. So I seeded and we have some new ones coming up, which is great. But some of them actually are okay. So that's good too. So, oh, my little garden cart, love this baby. Um, and look at it, all the rain in there. Um, I found this on Marketplace. There was an elderly lady who had purchased it uh, to try to help her garden. She was going for surgery um, and it didn't help. So it was virtually brand new um, and she sold it and I happened to see it and she literally lived like six minutes up the road or so. So I was able to uh, grab it and now I can go in my garden beds and sit down instead of sitting on the edge and twisting and so yeah. Look at the carrots here. So nice. Tomatoes, so that one has been fully replaced. Um, the one that was there, there was no saving it. This one, I would have loved to have replaced it, but I don't, you can see I don't have a second one planted with it. I don't actually have another one of this variety. So I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping something comes up from this one. Oh, basil's looking good. I just transplanted the basil out. Um, we've got some cucumbers coming up. Oh wait, no, that is a kachari melon. Tomatoes there. Now this is radish. We've actually already had, oh look at this. We've actually already had a few radish from the garden very tasty right now so yeah see look at this these guys obviously got hit by the frost so they're probably not gonna make it but then I planted some seeds and we have babies coming up so it's okay it's okay lots of things in the garden so I did the same thing here again I put a new one in beside one that's really dead or frostbitten or whatever and we're just going to see what happens. If this one makes it great, if it doesn't, it's really easy to snip it out and be done with it. But everything else is looking really good. So these strawberries here, again, I'm going to leave them in for this season. Uh, at the end of this season, I'm also going to move them over to the asparagus bed. Look at this. Yummy. We're going to get there. The rhubarb. Some of it's coming along, some of it's looking 
pretty chewed up. I don't know if it's slugs or bugs or what, but something's chewing it up pretty good. There we go. So. And the peas are going. Got some hot peppers here. Yeah. Some more comfrey. Has caps over there are looking really good. The three of them. And then I actually ended up building beds for the other two over there because when I was trying to cut the grass around them, I found that it would have been really easy to take them out. So I didn't want to um, I didn't want to accidentally whip or snipper them or lawnmower them, so that was the easiest way to define that they were there was putting a bed around them. <laughs> All right. Oh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, 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 look, look, look. Do you guys see the baby ducklings? <laughs> All right, we'll pop in there, actually. We're, uh, we'll pop into that chicken coop because I have something to show you. I'm sure a lot of you remember that along with the Haskaps drowning in the spring, I actually um, had discovered where I planted one of my apple trees that it too was also drowning. And I dug it up and I potted it up and I thought, I'm going to just baby it a bit and I'm going to see if it lives. If I see any sign of life, I will quickly build it a mini raised bed, kind of like I did with the Haskaps there. Um, sorry, there, those three, and um, see if I can just raise it up off the ground enough so that its roots weren't completely swimming. Well, a number of days ago, probably like four or five days ago, uh, its buds broke, so it was alive. So I quickly whipped together a garden bed. And it's not a huge amount raised off the ground, but just enough so its roots aren't completely saturated. And look, there's leaves. It's not dead, which is, I'm, I'm really happy that it's not dead. That's, that's kind of a, it would kind of been a bit of a big bummer. <clears throat> All right, um, let's pop into the chicken coop. I have some mums with some chicken. Hello, mama. How's your babies? Yeah? Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> so we actually have another mom in that one too. Um, oh, we must have a new layer. It's a very small speckly egg. Cool. I'll stick it over here with these ones. How's that for colors, huh? Oh, look, there's another one. So I have some mums sitting on some nest boxes here. And then uh, those are chicks I hatched out earlier in the year. All right, let's show you the garden beds around the uh, chicken coop. So this is the garlic. And um, look at these planters. Our neighbor actually gave us these planters because she wanted new ones. So we went ahead and said, oh yeah, we'll put them to use. And look, doesn't this whole area look like completely different now? So nice. So I did a video of building these beds that you guys um, may or may not have seen, but look at the color. Look how happy this hot plant is. Like I swear every day, this thing just keeps getting taller, which is good. It means that the soil is good. It's happy there. I have been picking chamomile almost every single day, which uh, has been great. Lots of chamomile tea in the future. Now this was the only comfrey that really didn't look happy after its um, move. I was kind of a little bit worried, but then today I noticed that there's like a whole new, whole new bit of growth there. So it probably just shocked some of it and it'll be fine because the root system is coming up through. So it'll be really good, but lots of comfrey and chamomile and sunflowers, and all sorts of things that I planted in here. 
Um, and this little guy here, this is a Rosa Sharon that my mother-in-law gave to me. And um, I wasn't sure it was going to make it, but there she is. And then the blackberries. So we had planted 10 blackberry sticks in here. Um, that was the only one really that had any growth on it. So I cut the rest of them back to the ground uh, because they had all put out little, little shoots. Um, from their roots, not not necessarily the stick itself. There's only one that has no sign of life, and that's this one, and there's no sign of life around it. That doesn't mean that it's not alive down there somewhere. It just hasn't um, brought anything up yet from the ground, but like this stick here produced this little guy. This stick has growth, but it also produced these guys. This stick, these ones, this little stick here gave us those and oh this one here and this one here and here um, and then this little guy here and then in amongst the bed so we also have cosmos and um, sunflowers and uh, borage um, and a whole pile of other wildflowers that I've kind of just sprinkled in and around to to make this all look pretty. So tomorrow we're hoping to tackle this bed and get it prettied up. Uh, a lot of the flowers that my mother-in-law gave us are going to go in there and then a whole bunch of the seeds and then this whole front area will be done. Um, and the flowers that we're going to be putting in there are not flowers that are going to come back each year. Um, the flowers we're putting in there are just going to be for the summer because this fall that's where we're going to be planting the garlic. So it'll be garlic, blackberries, sort of like flowers, and then garlic um, just to make it all look nice. And then when uh, the paint that we want comes back in stock we'll be able to paint these two. And then of course we're going to hold off on, on that one but someday we'll have this exact chicken coop here and then the whole thing and I think it's gonna look really nice so you'll see down the line all the apple trees I think there's like only three of them that uh, need comfrey planted at the bottom of them and the comfrey came back on all the rest of them um, and the bees just are loving it which bodes well for our eventual hives but look at this like this these oh, caterpillars they just absolutely destroyed my trees so this is what soap and water does literally like it's dead it's just hanging there dead um, but I, it's a really <laughs> huge amount of soap compared to the water that I put in my sprayer and then I just spray 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 and so far it's helped clear the trees, but having to do it every three or four days sure uh, sure kicks you in the butt. But these are the things you gotta do if you want to uh, garden organically. And over here, we have one dill plant that decided to come back. So I actually seeded a couple more there and a couple in here, and we'll see if they decide to make an appearance. All right, let's pop over here and uh, show you how happy these guys are since I've got them in their beds. This was the one that I was worried about. It's got a lot of new growth, which is really nice. That one looks All right, so you can see here, these two Haskats were fine. They were never drowning. That was ne never an issue. But the issue was that when I was trying to cut around them, when the grass got really high, it was really hard to find them and safely cut around them. So this way, I now can whip or snip around them and ensure that I'm not taking out the, the bush itself. It is really mosquito-y. Uh, so let's go really fast because uh, after tomorrow, I won't really be able to go that way um, just because the the bees are going to be there. Um, so let's go really fast.
There. She's pretty low, still running. Still water in it. And in case you're wondering, I'm absolutely getting destroyed by mosquitoes. But you can see it's pretty low. I'll let you see what it looks like walking up to it. I know many of you have watched our apple orchard videos, so ta-da! Ta-da, ta-da, ta-da! There we go. So we use the chips from that we've chipped in the past, put them down. Um, yeah, there they are. We have enough space to put an electric fence around them if we feel that we need to or find that we need to. Um, and this, there's the apple trees. That is all the brush from along the sides here. And we have to chip all that, but we'll do it in the fall once the uh, hay's off. You can see them. And now I'm getting out of here because I think I could be carried away. But you can see how nice and open it is for them. They can fly right up and away into the fields. Um, south is kind of that way. So that's their entry point. And then you go that way. So yeah, AC's pretty excited. Uh, hopefully I will be able to show you the unboxing and um, of the nukes and putting them in the hives. Um, we'll, we'll see what uh, Thomas and AC set up. Uh, since I can't be out here for that. All right, on that note, I am literally just being eaten. So I am going to say thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next time. And uh, I'm going to go and um, do chores and maybe spray a whole whack of bug spray. <laughs>